or even maybe taking a timeout, they may have gotten an extra 10 yards. We'll take a quick break ourselves at the end of the first quarter. Marmel up 12-0 over Greensboro in this USA Conference game. Second quarter about ready to start here. Marable will be on the receiving end of a punt. Punting from his own end zone will be Robert Rouse. And standing at the 50-yard line for Marable. Donovan Lewis. Marable looks like they're going to try to put some pressure on this punter. And this is going to be a short kick. And they'll just let it bounce out to the 47 yard line. So again, field position in favor of Marable. They'll start inside Greensboro territory at the 47. And that's why it was so important for Marable maybe to get that punt off before the quarter was over. If you look at the flag across the field, probably can't see it, but there's a steady maybe 15, 10 to 15 mile an hour breeze. Now it's at the back of Marable. Diggs back in at quarterback. 12, He'll go from the hash mark in the Greensboro 47 yard line. He'll go back to pass. Over the middle, wide open, caught to the 30, down to the 25, down to the 20, and skipping back to the inside for Marable is Jordan Ligon, the junior wide receiver from Smyrna High School in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Up to that point, uh, Marable had the ball seven minutes, 37 seconds, and Greensboro seven minutes, 32, but the score is 12 nothing, and Marable driving on that pass to Jordan Ligon. Nice strike by Adam Diggs. Diggs a quarterback, Chenier to his right. Move Brewer from right to left. Looking, little swing pass to the outside and it is gonna be really well defended by the Greensboro defensive front. Number 92 was there to kind of break it up at first. And that was James Pergis, or I'm gonna to have to spell his name, P-E. G U E S. We didn't get any pronunciation from the uh, Greensboro SID staff before the game, so we apologize. Diggs back to pass again outside and a fumble. No, it's going to be incomplete. Nice hit by the Greensboro defender, defender Marquez Brown, the senior. Defensive back from Albemarle, Harbor Merle, North Carolina. It's going to be uh, the third and 13. Third down, to go. Second quarter, Maryville up 12 0. Third and 16. Chenier to the left of Diggs. Back to pass. Going to throw it wide open. Incomplete. Nobody there, but uh, coming out of the backfield, uncovered, was Brody Hess. A little too much mustard by Diggs, maybe, but uh, as a receiver, you got to catch that ball. Nobody covered him coming out of the backfield. Hess had lined up uh, just behind the right tackle, which would have been long, I believe, and nobody covered him. So fourth and 16. Remember with the wind at the back, Coach Sean Hayes saying go for it. 
not going to kick a field goal, although they have their wind at the back. Gravel's got to get down to the three-yard line for the first down. Plenty of time left on the play clock. Digs the quarterback. And we get a timeout by Coach Hayes. Don't forget, today is Coach to Cure Multiple, multiple Dystrophy Day. You can donate $10 today by texting CURE, that's C-U-R-E, to 50555. Thank you for your support of Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy. Maribel College Athletic Department would like to thank their key sponsors for the 2017 and 18 season. That's the Blunt Partnership, Jasper Highlands, Premier Transportation, and Smoky Mountain Brewery. We appreciate their support. Here early in the second quarter, 13.36 left to go. Maribel up 12-0. They are on the Greensboro 19-yard line, 4th and 16. Digs the quarterback. Tailback will be Chenier. Wide to the right is Siegel. Kaylin Carter and Devon, Devon, Donovan Lewis wide left. Here we go. Fourth down, Marimal. I believe Marimal is yet to make a fourth down conversion this year. That's Hess in motion. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Going to throw the ball out into the corner and overthrown. Maribel turns the ball over on downs. First and 10 for the Greensboro Pride with 13.30 left to go. Maribel had a great opportunity that time. They started that drive on the 27-yard line. Maribel has nine first downs. The Greensboro Pride yet to pick up one. Two of those first downs came on passing, six of rushing, and one on penalty. Maribel third down efficiency, one of four. Greensboro has not made one yet. Fourth down, Maribel has gone for it twice, hasn't made either. Maribel has run the ball 27 times for 138 yards. Greensboro has had the ball 13 plays for a negative one. And we've got whistles all over the place. Illegal. Well, false start is what he said on Greensboro. That'll back him up five if they take the penalty. And I don't believe they have the option. First and 15 now. Again, Greensboro still without a forward yard penalty, in this game. Two of five so far in passing for Greensboro. At five yards rushing. So here they go. The quarterback will be Cameron Webster. Webster was uh, 9 of 10 of 40 for coming into this game for 278 yards. He had thrown two touchdowns. Webster, can't, the tailback is Tolan Jones. And 44 yards before today. Jones going to bounce it to the outside. Jones going to get himself probably, well, he doesn't get anything. Good tackle over there by Marable. Man leading the way on the tackle was Jeremy Hardnett. Markel Key making the Final tackle. He's from Clarksville, Tennessee. Back to pass. Little screen to the outside. And that may have been a lateral. And yes, it was. And that's where they're going to mark it. That's a pass thrown behind the quarterback. And that actually is a fumble. So that goes all the way out to the nine yard line. Third down and 20. Got to get out to the, actually almost to the 20-yard line. It's going to be about third down and 16. Ball at the 9-yard line. Have to get out to the 
30 yard line. So it's 21. Cameron Webster, back to pass. Gonna look, gonna fake that ball. He's gonna roll out to his left. Gonna throw this ball downfield and it is almost intercepted by Maribel's Kalen Davis. So it's fourth down. Good athletic play though by uh, Cameron Webster. Maybe an ill-advised throw, there's three defenders in the air and that ball against the wind kind of floated. Lewis will be back deep. Lewis will be at about the 45 yard line. Jonathan Pfeiffer getting ready to punt. Donovan Lewis now at the 40 yard line. Maribel putting pressure in. The ball goes over the head of Pfeiffer. That's a safety. And Maribel now leads 14 0. Pfeiffer had no chance at that uh, as the ball went over his head. Pfeiffer, 5'9", 215, made a valiant attempt to get it. I don't think he got off the ground. <laughs> I think he saw that ball go over his head, and uh, he really didn't have much of a chance at that. Can't fault the punter on that. 14 nothing with 12.40 left to go. Maribel leading Greensboro in this USA South Conference game. Greensboro yet to get a forward positive yard. Second quarter score, Maribel 7, North Carolina Wesleyan 7. Second quarter score, Huntington 14, Brevard 3. If you heard the PA announcer, you hear Brevard, Brevard coming into the USA South Conference. So this is going to be a free kick after the safety with 12.40 left to go in the second quarter by Greensboro. It looks like Pfeiffer's going to place kick the ball. So Maribel waiting back at their 20-yard line. Looks like Clayton Ogle back there. And this is going to be kind of a line drive. It's going to be picked up by Maribel to the 40, to the inside, to the outside, back to the inside, 50, we have a flag. That was 34, Kashawn Decker, a freshman from Hoboken, New Jersey. Had a few people from New Jersey here at this school over the years. see what this flag is. Holding against Maribel, it's a spot foul. So it'll be 10 yards from the spot. Take Maribel back to the 36 yard line or 35. So Maribel up 14, nothing. They've had a safety. They've picked up a fumble for a touchdown and a running touchdown. So Maribel leads in the second quarter with 12.32 left to go. Maribel 138 total yards on 27 touches. Greensboro minus 15 total yards on 17 touches. And a quick burst by Elijah Harrison gets him about seven. Tackle made by Jacob Danzer from High Point, North Carolina. At the 41, it's second down. Second and Five, let's call it. Adam Diggs, the quarterback for Maribel. Harrison, the tailback to his right. And we've got a whistle. Got a timeout by the head coach of Greensboro, Greg Crum. Thousands of fans, friends, and competitors come to Maribel every year during Maribel sporting events. Maribel College's Hotel of Choices make that stay even more memorable. Please help us thank the Hampton Inn, the Hilton, La Quinta Inns and Suites, of course, 
Courtyard Marriott, the Holiday Inn Express, and they support Maribel, and you support them through this season. And they're all close by here. The airport uh, is Tyson, McGee Tyson Airport, which is 10 minutes from here. It's actually not the Knoxville Airport. It is in Blount County, 10 minutes from here by a slow car ride, and all those hotels are right here near Maribel. So uh, if you're here to see a sporting event, for Maribel College, or you're just here coming up in a couple of weeks to see the beautiful fall colors, better get your hotel room quick, and you can get them at the Hilton, La Quinta Inns and Suites, Courtyard, Marriott, and the Holiday Inn Express. Here we go, Maribel, second and four. Going to come this way, and good job by Harrison to the 50. Harrison inside Greensboro territory, a great, great job by Harrison and also the lead blocker there was Kyler Long a defensive lineman 64280 playing from the uh, slot back position Ben Buell in there as the fullback back to pass to the outside caught complete and getting out of bounds was Michael Smith his first reception of the day. Smith uh, before today had 304 yards receiving, about 14 yards per catch. He gets about three on that one. 14 nothing, Marable, 11.35 left to go. Second quarter, Marable from the USA South, as is Greensboro from the USA South. Diggs from Fulton High School, the quarterback, back to pass, over the center and diving and not getting the catch was Buell, I believe. Let him just a little bit much. Buell, the senior, 6'2", 240 from Knox Central High School. Been around a while. That one just a little bit overthrown. Third down and seven. Looking for a little bit of a blitz. Back to pass, Diggs feels the pressure and he's gonna get sacked from behind. All the way back to the 45-yard line of Maribel will be fourth and 12. I believe Maribel will punt. Diggs felt the pressure and then uh, couldn't find anybody. And before he could get the ball off, he got sacked from behind. Second sack given up by the Maribel offensive line. This season back deep for Greensboro's Garrett Hall, 5'9", 172 from Asheboro, North Carolina. Here comes the punt, and that's going to be end over end, and that's going to sail out of bounds probably somewhere around the 20. Here comes the referee as he marches down the sideline, his best guess. And that's going to be a pretty good punt down to the 12-yard line. Kickers now uh, have several options, a regular punt. They can rugby kick the ball, which they'll run one side or the other, or they can take the ball and kick it kind of with a point down as opposed to the belly of the ball down to the foot. So that one goes out at the 12, and Greensboro takes the ball back with 10.30 left to go. Maribel up 14-0. Quarterback Cameron Webster. Webster. Going to hand the ball off and skirting it to the outside and getting knocked out of bounds. Now we've got a late flag. Tackle made by Frances Marshall and Bo Herring. The game was not sure where the ball was set down. Looks like at about the 13. So if they take the penalty to go half the distance to the goal. So down to the six and a half or seven yard line. Trying to figure out. Did not see whether it was a hold 
Okay. Face mask by Greensboro. So somebody on the Greensboro team grabbed a face mask. I believe it was number 55 for Greensboro. And a little toss sweep to the outside goes nowhere as it was Cameron Webster kind of getting hemmed in. No gain, maybe a yard loss. Call it no gain, second and 15. Still Greensboro. Um, with negative yardage. Webster, the quarterback, going to throw this little quick out pass in and out of the hands of the receiver. And that was Greg Tyler. So it's going to be third and 15. Wind has died down here on the field. Flag kind of just at rest and maybe a little bit of a breeze. But it is definitely in the face of the Greensboro quarterback, Cameron Webster. 9.30 left to go second quarter. Maryville up 14 to nothing. And Greensboro still with any, a positive yard. Let's see if Cameron Webster has something to say about that. He'll go back to pass looking. Going to get flushed out of the pocket. Going to throw the ball down. And it is complete. And it is caught. Going to be a first down for Greensboro. Nice catch. But uh, I think it was number 19. Number 18, first and 10 for Greensboro. And putting the ball down and is Webster getting a couple of yards. Second and seven. Webster, the quarterback. That completed pass was uh, their first positive yards, and he's bringing the ball down every time as Marable did a pretty good job defending. Quarterback Cameron Webster carries the ball. Third and five at the 35. Call it third and four now. Cameron Webster trying to get something going for the pride. Down 14 nothing. Go back to pass. There's that little quick sit down route. The ball is knocked away. Good tackle over there by Marable. The defender was Pierre Chadwick from Nashville Overton. And looking at uh, Pfeiffer, the punter, he comes on limping a little. Back two, deep for Marable, Donovan Lewis. Wind uh, still fairly brisk in the face of Lewis. Let's see, uh, in face of Pfeiffer, let's see if Lewis can get a good return. Marable with a little pressure. This is going to go end over end. And Marable gets away from it. And the ball gets to the 30-yard line. So uh, about a 40-yard punt for Pfeiffer. And Marable starts at its 30-yard line. Crane, Kane Adamson back in. Kyler Long, by the way, Marable, 6'4", 280. Tailback for Marable. Chenier into the mesh, and Chenier going to get about a yard or two. And then he dives forward. Really nice kid, Chenier, from Baytown, Texas, the junior, 5'8", 185. Replaced Trenton Schuler. Schuler was injured. Janier came in and has done marvelous. Schuler now graduated. Got a flags all over the place. 
and caught by Siegel inside Greensboro territory on the free down. I believe it's going to be offsides or against Greensboro. 7.28 left to go, second quarter, 14-0 Maryland. Diggs really has a pretty pass. Got the ball, some air under it that time, and Siegel leaped up to grab it. Siegel had about 330 yards up to that catch. He's averaging about 83 yards a game. So back to the 47, or into the 47 of Greensboro. Marable with the ball. Siegel in motion, little naked bootleg. Little screen pass to Siegel. Siegel going to get uh, to the 35 and a very, very good defensive play by Keon Reynolds of Greensboro. Had Keon Reynolds not made that tackle, that might have gone for about 15 or 20. Nicely designed play, though, on the naked bootleg. From the hash mark, Diggs. To Chenier, right up the middle. Chenier across the 40 and still more down to the 36-yard line of Greensboro. That's going to be a first and 10. 6.45 left to go in the second quarter. Maribel up 14-0 over Greensboro. Waiting for the change to be set. Maribel with a hurry-up offense. Uh, out pacing the chains. Diggs, the junior quarterback for Maribel from the hash mark. Gets the snack from Munoz. He'll roll left, right. Looking, gonna carry the ball and he's gonna get out of bounds after about a three yard gain. That was Kane Adamson, I'm sorry. Kane Adamson, the future quarterback. Maribel also has another quarterback, Chris Castillo waiting in the wings. Adamson, a freshman, digs the junior. Adams with the option read, and what a push by the Maribel offensive line. Lawson, Montgomery, Munoz, Bird, and Long. Just a huge push. Chenier gets about four, it's third and two. Greensboro's got everybody bunched up at the line of scrimmage. Merrill's going to adjust. And it's going to be Chenier to the outside. Cuts it up to the 20, to the 15. Cuts it inside. 10-5. Touchdown, Merrill. That goes for 28 yards. Coach Gr Crum on the other side wanting to hold from somewhere. I don't know that he could see it from the far side, but he's uh, screaming and yelling. He's down about the 20 yard line. Can't tell if he's right or wrong. So Marable on the run by Chenier goes up 20 to nothing with 534 left to go in the second quarter. New kicker for Marable, kick sails, kicks good and Marable gets the first extra point of the day. They lead 21 nothing. And the kicker for Maribel that time was Andrew Tanner from Conyers, Georgia. So Maribel College Athletic Department again would like to thank Ken Joe Markets, Firehouse Subs, Realty Trust Group, the Comp Wealth Management for their key support during this season. Let's go over some stats here as we're five minutes and 34 seconds before halftime. Maribel up 20. One nothing. Maribel with 13 first downs. Greensboro one. Maribel has three first downs passing. The first down by Greensboro was about a 20-yard pass. Nine first downs rushing. One by penalty. Maribel on third down is two of six. Maribel has run 39 plays for 227 yards. Greensboro has run 24 plays for just 15 yards. Maribel averaging about six points. Six yards per play, Greensboro point six. So getting ready to kick off for Maribel is Ian Hubs. Is that Hubs? 
Well, this ball's going to sail, and it's going to sail short down to the 13-yard line. And getting to the outside and then brought down about the 25, maybe the 26. Was likes. So first and 10 for the Greensboro Pride. Referees have not set the ball yet on the exchange. And their coach, uh, Craig Crum, holding him over there. Now, I don't know if they called a timeout or not. Five-yard penalty tacked on at the end of the run, but no explanation. I have no idea what that penalty was, and neither does anybody else in here. Cameron Webster, the quarterback for Greensboro. Good field position. Going to throw this ball on the inside, and it's incomplete. Defender for Maribel was Webster's pass is incomplete. Eddie Burton. Eddie Burton, the junior, defensive back from Jefferson County in Wadley, Georgia. Webster, second and ten. Going to go back to pass, looking. And there's a flag on the play, and he's met at uh, about the 35-yard line. Webster, a tough kid. He's 5'10", 210. He's from Roxy, Mississippi. He gained about five on that, but that's uh, they're having a tough time explaining this. Uh, as Coach Crum on the other side is asking for a detailed explanation. So there's two penalties on the play, apparently. Well, they got that right. Offsides by Marable. That was uh, Jaylene Joyce from Columbia, 20, Tennessee. I don't believe he was in there. Second and five. Throw this ball down and knocked away. Good job by Marable coming up to knock it away was uh, Jeremy Hardnett from Tucker, Georgia. Webster's pass is incomplete. Sophomore. Intended for Ryan Wall. Defended by Jeremy Hardnett. Hardnett, 5'10", 170. Third and five. Again, just one first down for the Greensboro Pride up to this point. Back to pass, and that's over the hands, and it'll be fourth down. Cameron Webster with the flip. Boone did not get the pass. So with 5.08 left to go, Maribel leading 21-0. Pfeiffer's going to punt for Greensboro, and back deep is Donovan Lewis. Waiting. Here comes Merrill with some pressure. And that's going to go end over end. And Merrill gets away from it. It goes just inside the 40 yard line, maybe the 39. Maribel's going to take over and back in is uh, Kane Adamson for Maribel.
Maribel up 21-0 here at home. 4.59 left to go second quarter. Adamson, the zone read and right up the middle across the 40 to the 45, still going and out across the 50 yard line for Maribel is Chase Christmas. Christmas, 5'7", 185 from Huntersville, North Carolina. Across the 50 into the 49, to the 49 of Greensboro. Nice little burst by Chase Christmas. And Christmas with the ball again. And he's going to get uh, not quite as much, maybe two, maybe three, to the two yards probably to the 47. Four oh eight left to go. Maribel leading. Kane Admonson is the quarterback. And it's going to be a quarterback draw, and we got uh, a flag thrown into the mess, and that'll probably come back. Kane Adamson carries the ball. Kyle Lawson, the sophomore defensive lineman, kind of going, what? Lots of penalties in this game. 3.56 left to go. So that's going to be against Maribel. It was holding by Tavian Montgomery, the sophomore offensive lineman from Spring, Texas. Second down, 16. Adamson, little swing pass outside to Christmas. Christmas can't get by the first tackler, and that was a pumped up linebacker, number 31, Garrett Brand Brannick, the linebacker, 5'9", 200, from Wake Forest. Maribel hurrying up. Third and 16 for Maribel. Need to get to the 39 yard line of Greensboro. Back to pass. And that pass is knocked away. And I'm not sure about that route. Number 11 for Maribel, which was Michael Smith in 85. Simon Holcomb. Kind of crossed uh, in the same area where the ball went. So Maribel's going to punt today and back deep is Roper. I believe that's how you say it. Or Roarer. I'll make that Garrett Hall. And that's a boomer. And Hall's going to let it go. And goes into the end zone. Good decision by Garrett Hall. And Maribel's punter on that was Kenneth Horn, the senior. And boy, he boomed that line drive. It was like a shotgun shell. 2.57 left to go second quarter. Maribel up 21-0 here at home against USA South opponent Greensboro. The Pride trying to get something going. Greensboro with a snap, a little quick swing path to the outside, and getting just a few yards is Garrett Hall. Keeping them passes short by Cameron Webster, no gain. The 
was Garrett Hall on the reception. Back to pass. Going to throw that ball and getting uh, some good yardage that time for Greensboro. Nice pass, nice catch as Jakari Boone gets four or five. Be third down and let's see where they set it. Four, third and four. Back to pass. Going to throw this ball downfield. And nice play. Defended very nicely there by Marable's Jeremy Hardnett. Hardnett. Little out and go, and it's incomplete. Should be fourth down. It is fourth down, not third down. Have a lot of extra coaches on the other side of the field. That just happened to be sitting in the stands. Lewis back deep. Lewis uh, has the capability of breaking one here or at any time. Pfeiffer getting ready to punt. Maryville almost blocked the last punt. High snap. And this is going to be a short kick off the side of his foot. And it's going to be at about the 50 and bounces back inside Greensboro territory. And again, Marable with very good field position. Starts at the Greensboro 49 with 1.55 left to go. They lead 21-0. Diggs comes back in at quarterback for Maribel. Tailback, Elijah Harrison. Harrison, a freshman, 5'9", 170. Looks a little bigger than that. He'll get the ball on the little outside sweep, and Harrison going to get him about seven or eight yards in a good push out there. Pulling to the outside, leading the way, was Kyle Larson, the sophomore offensive lineman from St. Simons, Georgia. Second down and let's call it four. Same play, and it is Harrison getting to the 39, maybe the 40 will be third and short. Third down and two. Diggs the quarterback for Maryville. And it's Harrison right up the middle. And Harrison with the push. And he's going to get about three or four well beyond the first down marker to the 36-yard line. First and 10 Maryville with 102 left to go. Leading 21-0 over Greensboro here in Maryville, Tennessee. Diggs looking over the defense. Little sprint draw pass. I throw this ball deep downfield to Siegel. Touchdown, Siegel. And Marable has it 27 0 on a nice pass from Diggs to Siegel. Siegel, a little bit of a crossing route, then up the seam for the touchdown. Marybelle, Adam Diggs pass complete to Matt for the touchdown. 27 0 with 49 seconds left to go. Thirty-six yards. Andrew Tanner to attempt the extra point. Tanner with the extra point attempt. Low snap. Good scoop. No good. Maryville has missed every extra point today. Go figure. Maryville leads with 49 seconds left to go before the half. Over Greensboro, 27 nothing. Don't forget, today is Coach to Cure Muscular Dystrophy Day, or MD Day. You can donate $10 today by texting CURE to 50555. That's CURE, C-U-R-E, to 50555. Thank you for your support of Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy. 
that pass uh, 36 yards from Adam Diggs to Max Siegel. Puts Maryville up 27, nothing, extra point, no good. Maryville has missed three extra points and has gotten one safety. And one defensive touchdown. Second year head coach, Greg Crum, trying to get this program back on track. And this is going to be a squib kick, and it's picked up and then fumbled and then picked up and getting across the 30-yard line for Greensboro is Sammy Likes, the freshman from West Columbia, South Carolina. Barrett making the tackle for Maribel. So Maribel back on defense with 43 seconds left, leads 27 nothing. Greensboro really not uh, getting anything going. I think their biggest had one first down, if I have that correct. And uh, just a miss handoff. The tailback went one way, Briggs, and it was Webster going the other way, and that's going to be a loss. Coach Crum, I know, is not happy about that. A lot of mistakes. And this is their fourth ball game. Just looking at the body language, there's no giddy up in that step over there with seven seconds left. Last play before halftime. Going to hand this off. And into the mesh they go. And that's the end of the first half. Maribel leading here at halftime. At Maribel over the Greensboro Pride, 27-0. We'll call you, uh, or we'll come back here shortly. I'm going to take a bit of a break. And again, Maribel up 27-0 here at Maribel. It's halftime. Gentlemen, presenting the MC Smutty's Dance Team. Or even maybe taking a timeout, they may have gotten an extra 10 yards. We'll take a quick break ourselves at the end of the first quarter. Maribel up 12-0 over Greensboro in this USA Conference game. Second quarter about ready to start here. 
Marable will be on the receiving end of a punt, punting from his own end zone, will be Robert Rouse. And standing at the 50-yard line for Marable. Be Donovan Lewis. Marable looks like they're going to try to put some pressure on this punter. And this is going to be a short kick. And they'll just let it bounce out to the 47-yard line. So again, field position in favor of Marable. They'll start inside Greensboro territory at the 47, and that's why it was so important for Marable maybe to get that punt off before the quarter was over. If you look at the flag across the field, you probably can't see it, but there's a steady maybe 15, 10 to 15 mile an hour breeze. Now it's at the back of Marable. Diggs back in at quarterback. He'll go from the hash mark in the Greensboro 47 yard line. He'll go back to pass. Over the middle, wide open, caught to the 30, down to the 25, down to the 20. And skipping back to the inside for Marable is Jordan Ligon, the junior wide receiver from Smyrna High School in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Up to that point, uh, Marable had the ball 7 minutes 37 seconds and Greensboro 7 minutes 32, but the score is 12 nothing, and Marable driving on that pass to Jordan Liggett. Nice strike by Adam Diggs. Diggs, a quarterback, Chenier to his right. Move Brule from right to left. Looking.
Welcome back, everybody. George DeBobby here at Marable College, where the halftime score is Marable 27 and Greensboro nothing. Just a, a quick wrap-up here on the stats. Marable has touched the ball 48 times, 293 yards. Greensboro has touched the ball 32 times for 26 yards. Uh, that's really all you can say. A lot of penalties, a lot of uh, miscues on both sides. Marable's held the ball 6 minutes, 43 seconds. Greensboro 13-17, Maribel with three offensive touchdowns and one defensive touchdown. With me right now, I've got a really special guest, uh, kind of an old favorite of not only mine, but a lot of people around here, former head coach of Maribel College football, Coach Phil Wilkes. And Phil, it's really good to see you. George, good to see you and, and good to be back. Uh, it's typical Maribel College football. Uh, great day, beautiful setting. Uh, couldn't imagine anybody wanting to be any place else but right here. Coach, you've had to put a lot of time on this field and across the street on the practice field. It's got to be good for you to come back here and see all this. And the players are a lot bigger than they were. They're a lot faster than they were. Um, just uh, amazing how things progress year after year. Well, it's it's nice to, to see the program uh, moving forward and, uh, prog and the progress they've made with it. And, uh, just watching them today, uh, no question, Maryville College football team is well coached. And uh, uh, you say there's been some penalties and miscues, but uh, primarily not on the Maryville side. Uh, I've been real impressed with the young men and how well they play. Coach, uh, when you were here, you probably had one or two paid assistants. Now they get five or six or seven. So it's a little different. Uh, and you were here not that long ago. What? Uh, Seven, eight, ten years ago? Uh, George, it would be maybe uh, about 15, 16 wow. years ago. Time time keeps moving on. You're getting old. Well, <laughs> <laughs> probably. Either that or they're getting younger. One of the two. Well, you know, you and I both uh, have known each other for a long time, meeting here, of course. Um, you had a son who who's doing quite well. Talk about Scott, your son. I know he was coaching somewhere. Uh, Scott is at the University of Louisville. Uh, he Just was, a small program, right? Right. He was, <laughs> he was at Western Kentucky with uh, Coach Petrino, and uh, when Coach Petrino went to Louisville, Scott was one of the five people in that program that he took with him. Um, and he's the assistant head strength coach for football, and uh, you probably don't know this, but our youngest son, Trent, Last year, worked with the uh, football operations folks at Louisville and uh, started grad school this fall uh, and is still working with them. So I've got both of them in the program, and uh, they had Trent as the advanced man. He would, he would fly if they were playing University of North Carolina. He flies down early, makes sure everything's set up for the team to get there. And uh, it's pretty neat to look down and see them both on the sideline and uh, both doing well and both enjoying it. And, uh, of course, it's it's nice when you're in a program that's having a lot of success, too. Well, when you were here, you were all those – you had all those positions. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> well, I, I, and, and I will say this. I, I did have uh, people like Jim Pavo. Jim Pavo. Uh, who, who, between the two of us, and, of course, he was here most of the time during my tenure, where a lot of the other really good coaches we had would be here you know, two years or three or four and then and gone. But, uh, you know, Jim was a, a great uh, uh, stabilizer and, and was very consistent and uh, a, a big help. But uh, you're right, we, we did it all. We watered the fields. We did the media guides. Uh, uh, we, we did it all. We did the equipment. <laughs> I think so. the first game I, I, I did, we went to Wilmington, Ohio, and – we were going to have lunch, and I had no idea what lunch was. And you guys went under the bus, pulled these coolers out, <laughs> sandwiches <laughs> down in the coolers, and we ate at a rest stop, and a little different now. Well, and and uh, I will say this. There were a lot of things we had to kind of make do. But the one thing, uh, George, that, that I remember fondly, and I think a lot of the players would, you're right, on the trip to the ball game, uh, we would – pull off at a roadside park the kids could get off the bus and you didn't have to worry about being in a restaurant and 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 being quiet and they could go sit with their buddies and laugh and talk and stretch their legs and uh, I, I think most of the guys would remember that very 
fondly. And, and I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, every other year we would travel <coughs> east and i can't remember who we were always going to play but we would stop at the same restaurant stop and eat lunch in appalachian state and i had some uh, a former trainer that was the head trainer at app state that i had worked with previously and a couple of their assistants that i knew well and we'd always stop and and invariably they would stop and we'd eat all of us eat lunch together and their players were always jealous because not only did we have a bag lunch but Coach Pavo made sure that the ladies in the cafeteria would always fry up a bunch of fried chicken, and their kids were jealous because our kids were awesome getting fried chicken. Well, Appy's heart, close to my heart, as you know, because that's where I played. But uh, we always used to have fried chicken, uh, and that it was uh, when we go on the road, they would try to give us what they'd call a steak. It's a poor example of a steak, <laughs> right. a pregame meal, and you know. Now the the nutrition is so different and so much better, but you know back then that was what we had and that's what we, you played at Marshall, of course, and a big time program. And you know I'm sure that uh, the things are a lot different there than they are now. It's just progressed. Athletes bigger, better. They're much better taken care of. Some of my, some of them I think are babied a little bit too much, but um, it, it's quite a difference back from the 70s and 60s and when we played and when you coached here. The game has, has certainly changed, and uh, the, the good thing is is that the young men that are playing this game, especially here at the college, uh, I, I just mentioned to Joe Dawson, who I'm here with, that uh, these kids are here because they love football and they love playing the game, and it's fun to coach young men like that. So uh, I, I enjoyed the time here. I enjoyed the young men, uh, and, and you know them as well as I do from being around them so much and traveling with us. And, uh, uh, George, I, I still think back, and I enjoyed having you on the trips with us, and, and we, uh, we had a good time. Well, uh, w one thing I can always say about your teams, they were uh, always well coached, very well mannered, uh, always gentlemen on the team. You never saw any hotheads, uh, Pavo occasionally. <laughs> But uh, I, I uh, learned a lot just uh, from being around your, your coaching expertise. I remember you used to carry uh, that uh, – there was a chart you had that would tell you whether to go for one point or two points. Two points, points yeah. And I think it came from Michigan or somewhere like that. Yeah. I don't remember. Well, it came from Minnesota, Lou Holtz. Okay. Uh, had a younger brother that played for uh, Coach Holtz at North Carolina State. And, uh, but uh, the young men we had were uh, really – good young men and they were fun to be around and, and fun to coach and uh, you know, part of part of my mission I always felt like was to just not teach them about football but hopefully to get them ready for life after football in college and make sure they got a degree and I wanted to be able to have them know how to present themselves uh, to interview for jobs and I'm sure some of the guys didn't like uh, uh, our dress code, so to speak, and, and if I were doing it now, probably let some of that slide a little bit. But Kids are different. At the, at the time, you just think, you know, this is the way you need to act and this is the way you need to be to, to be successful in life. And, and, and that's what I always tried to get across to the young men, too. What I like about Maryville College, you know, you've been away here from 15 years. You're still here, and it's always great to have you. You've been a, a great friend to me all those years and kind of helped me through some tough times on the road. And uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I always appreciated uh, having you, and I always enjoy coming back and seeing that you're still here and some things don't change. No, That's they don't. good. Uh, and uh, great to see you, and, and good luck. Former head coach Phil Wilkes of the Merrill College Fighting Scots will be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, 
Coach Phil Wilkes, former head football coach here. We get ready for a second half action. Marable leading 27-0. They will receive the ball. And it is picked up at the 10-yard line to the 15, to the 20, and gets out to the 24-yard line. Uh, ball was kicked off from the 50, which would have meant there was a penalty at the end of the halftime, which uh, we're having a tough time communicating with some of the people down in the field. Officials are... Um, Trying to do a good job there, letting us know, but just not getting information to us. Adam Diggs starts at quarterback for Marable. Always good to uh, talk to coach, former coach, head coach here, Phil Wilkes. Kind of got the program some notoriety, and uh, they stepped it up a little bit with him around. And it is Chenier to the 30, 35, and across the 35, he'll get 12 out to the 37-yard line. Webster in the first half for uh, make it Diggs. Let's go with Diggs if I can get to it. Tell you his stats. Marable has a first and ten. And it is Janier off the left wing to the outside. Keeping those legs churning. He'll get another first down. First down at the 49, and Marable just churning. Digs the second-year quarterback from just down the road in Knoxville, played at Fulton High School. Back to Chenier, and Chenier with another first down to the 40, across the 35, and down to the... 32-yard line. Janier and Marable with that hurry-up offense. Opening drive, Marable up 27-0. Diggs again to Janier. Janier in that mesh Gets about three yards, and he's going to take a break. Coming in to replace him now is Elijah Harrison. Janier looking good. <laughs> 75 degrees right now here at Hanukkah Field. Opening drive of the second half for Marable. Back to pass Diggs. Little out pass. It is caught complete, and that's going to be – Close to the first down, but uh, it is not a first down. Uh, down. Brody Hess, the junior tight end from Alcoa, Tennessee, uh, probably about four miles from here, makes that catch. Brody on uh, three state championship teams in high school. Alcoa, a 3A powerhouse uh, known across the country. Coach Gary ranking over 400 victories. And right up the middle, it is Marable and getting good yardage again for Marable is Elijah Harrison. He's going to get the first down and much, much more. be first and 10 from the 14-yard line. And it's going to be Harris into the outside. He'll drift to the outside, and he's going to get slammed to the ground. Tackle made by number 31. That's uh, Garrett Ben Brannick. Harrison getting just two yards, maybe three. Janier the tailback for Marable. Two wideouts 
And Chenier right up the middle to the five. Touchdown, Marable. And what a good push again by Lawson, Montgomery, Munoz, Bird, and Long, that front five of Marable. Marable goes to the opening drive, and they go about 75 yards for the touchdown. Now, Marable to date today has missed on every extra point. So we're trying another extra point kicker, Ian Hubbs, from the center of the field. Hubbs boots that one, and, uh, well, hallelujah, Merrill gets their first extra point of the day. So Merrill up 34 nothing here at home over the Greensboro Pride. So Harrison ran that uh, touchdown 12 yards. And they now lead 34 nothing. But uh, Elijah uh, Chenier, Marable, got the bulk of that yards uh, on three or four consecutive handoffs. Chenier has 127 yards on 13 carries. Harrison, number 29 for Marable, has 93 yards on 13 carries. Uh, Chase Christmas also, he's had two attempts for 15 yards. Griggs and Lyles back deep, and this is going to go to Griggs at the seven. He'll cut it out to the outside. Got himself a little bit of a lane, gets to the 26-yard line. And we're going to have... Two guys, number 16 for Greensboro, number 7 for Marable, uh, getting flags thrown. We don't have a 16 on the roster for Greensboro. There's a lot of after the play activity. Referees trying to sort it out. From my perspective, um, both guys got into it. And where I sit, I'm about uh, 75 feet above the field. Got a pretty good view. Let's see what they call. Again, we don't have a 16 on the roster for Greensboro, but uh, we do have a 42 for Maribel, and that was... Uh, Elijah, uh, racial. So offsetting penalties, which is uh, like kissing your sister. Ball at the 27-yard line, first and 10 for Greensboro. Looks like we've got a new quarterback for Greensboro, and that's going to be Robinson. Robinson, six feet tall, 180 pounds. He's a freshman. Greensboro down 34 nothing early in the third quarter here at Maribel. Beautiful day. It's going to go back to pass though that little out pattern and getting through and then fumbling the ball out of bounds. It's going to be a completed pass. Nice run. Nice run by Hall. It looked like he was going to be caught for a loss. He stepped out of bounds at the 31 yard line. It'll be Second down and seven. Second down, six. Robinson, quick pass over the middle, and a good hit by Marable's number 26. And now they throw a flag. 
Blake Henderson from Marable High School on the hit. I'm not sure what the flag was about unless it was targeting. Maybe taunting because he kind of stood over him. Guys, this is football. This isn't soccer. I believe the infraction, though, was because he kind of stood over him there for a half a second or so, and Henderson's going to come out. Blake Henderson, 6'1", 185 from Maryville High School, Maryville, Tennessee, and uh, the... Greensboro Pride seemed to get a little bit psyched up. Tolan Jones on the carry, but uh, the referees better not let this one get away. And now we've got a flag on the other side, and this is what's happening. Going into the game for the Scots. Is Trey Chandler, a freshman from Seymour, Tennessee, played at Kings Academy. Leaving the game is Frances Marshall from Greenville, Georgia. Marshall, a defensive lineman, probably a linebacker, defensive end. Now let's see where this one goes. No flag. Then why did they throw it? So second and five. Referee wants all the players to come inside and talk to him. The head official, the referee. Haven't seen this. And of course, Coach Greg calls his quarterback over there. In the spirit of listening to the referees, Coach Greg, that's not a very good thing to do. Another handoff to Jones, and Jones gets the first down. 34 nothing. This is the first time that uh, the Greensboro Pride has been in Marable territory. And it's the third quarter. So they're sacked up after that hit by Blake Henderson, which was a good hit by Marable. Blake, with a little bit of taunting, kind of fired up the Greensboro crowd. Ball at the 44-yard line, 10.30 left to go. Third quarter, Marable up 34 nothing. Robinson going to roll out, going to turn up the field, and Robinson's going to get some good yardage, and there's a fumble, and let's see who's got it. Maryville players say they got it. Referees just getting there, and they'll sort it out. Marable clearly had the ball. Ball down at the Marable 34. And of course, we can't sort it out up here. First and 10. One thing you learn over the years of playing football and watching it so much is you never win an argument with an official. Best strategy, don't argue. First and 10 though at the Marable 34, deepest penetration of the game by Greensboro. In fact, this is the only drive they've been in Marable territory.
We'll wait for the referees to um, get this squared away. Not sure what the discussion is about, so we won't speculate. I know Coach Hayes was talking about the spot of the ball. Maryville College Athletic Department would like to thank our key sponsors for 2017 and 18, Blunt Partnership, Jasper Highlands, Premier Transportation, and Smoky Mountain Brewery. Coach uh, Crum out on the field, then back off. Here we go, first and 10, Greensboro on the move. Little pass over the middle and knocked away. And now we get a late flag in. It's going to be pass interference on Marable, the field judge who uh, was behind the play. Call holding on Marable. It's a spot foul. So Greensboro now down to the 24-yard line. Coach Hayes of Maribel not very happy. Justin Robinson, the quarterback, going to throw this ball to the outside and another good hit. Tackle by Maribel, Eddie Burton. Now, that was more celebrating than Blake Anderson did. Second and 12, two-yard loss on the play. Robinson, the quarterback. Hands it off to Tolan, and he's going to be hit in the backfield. And there's going to be about a yard loss at the bottom of the pile there. For Maryville is D'Angelo Cullington, the senior, 6'3", 285, from Irwin, North Carolina. Collington been uh, kind of a big force on the Maryville defense. Third and 14. Chaston Robinson going to go back to pass. And throw this ball to the outside, caught and knocked out of bounds at the 20 yard line. It's going to be about five yards short of the first down. Reception made by Mike Clark from Chattanooga Red Bank. I'll take that back. That's on our side. That's Jakari Boone. So fourth down and let's call it five. Good drive by the Greensboro Pride, down 34-0. Eight minutes left to go in the game. Robinson, the quarterback. Tolan right next to him, the tailback. Wide receiver in motion, and we had a man in motion. Going to throw the ball outside, and uh, the referees got that one. So that'll set them back five. It'll be fourth down and 10 now. And let's see if uh, Coach Crum decides to kick a field goal or go for it. Greensboro down 34 nothing with 7.44 left to go. Not sure their place kicker. That would be uh, a 42 yard field goal from there. But it's fourth and 10 right now. So they're going to go for it. Tolan in the backfield. Robinson the quarterback. Tight end out in the pattern. Throw this ball out in the corner. Miss communication between the quarterback 
Robinson, the wide receiver. Ryan Wall went in on a post and Robinson threw the ball out to the sidelines. So somebody didn't get the message. The tight end went straight up the center of the field. He was kind of open. 7.28 left to go. The ball over on downs. Maryville now has the ball. Quarterback for Maryville is Adam Diggs. Diggs going to fake the handoff, roll the other way. Little drop pass to the receiver on the outside. He's going to get about eight yards. Nice dump pass and nice yak yards after catch by Donovan Hewitt Lewis. This is going to be seven yard gain, second and three. Really loading up on the box is Greensboro, but getting through Chenier. Chenier's going to get the first down. And again, uh, behind Montgomery, Manos, and Bird on the inside, and Long and Lawson at the tackles. Marable gets another first down. 6.49 left to go in this third quarter. Marable up 34 0. Diggs with a handoff and right up the middle. Chenier going to get 10. He's going to get 15. And he'll get about 16 or 17 yards on that run. Chenier, when you look at him, as far as height, uh, you look at him and you go, eh. You know, Chenier's 5'8", 185, but he can run. He's just a junior. 16 yards on the carry. Well over 100 yards today. Diggs, the quarterback for Merrill. Christmas in the backfield. He's going to cut it up. Christmas is going to get about, I guess, three yards. Chase Christmas from Huntersville, North Carolina, 5'7", 185. Seven men in the box for Greensboro. Diggs, the quarterback, going to give it to Christmas. He's going to get to the outside. He'll cut it up, and Christmas gets another two or three. Nice tackle that time by the cornerback coming up for Greensboro, Jarrell Brown, a cornerback. He's from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Five nine one fifty five. Maribel on the move at the forty one of Greensboro, up thirty four nothing. Christmas will reset left to right. Digs to Christmas. He'll get to the outside, and he'll go down the sideline briefly and get knocked out of bounds on a hard tackle by. Keon Reynolds. Reynolds, one of the leading tacklers on uh, the Greensboro team. Marvel's got fourth down and about three. Leading 34 nothing. Marvel's going to go for it. Christmas in the backfield. Christmas right up the middle, and he'll get the first down. And a pretty good uh, push by the Maribel line again. And you just can't say enough about Munoz and Montgomery on that particular play. Vivian Montgomery, sophomore, 6'2", 285, with a big push that time. First and 10, Maribel. Christmas with a quick pass, caught, and just tackled by the shoestring. Christopher, excuse me, Michael Smith on the reception. The tackle made by Greensboro's Jaron Hamrick, freshman cornerback from Shelby, North Carolina. Five-yard gain. And Diggs going to keep it and throw it out to the outside to Smith. Smith breaks a tackle and uh, 
he's going to get uh, the first down. Nice little option, sprint draw option. Diggs has the option to hand the ball off, run the ball himself, or throw it to the outside. Tough to defend. Marable gets 10. Diggs with the handoff to Christmas to the 15, still going across the 10, and he gets down to the eight yard line. Eighteen yard game. Inside the ten, first and goal for Marable. 327, third quarter, Marable up 34-0. And it's Diggs this time to the outside. Diggs sidesteps, five, dives into the end zone, touchdown. And good run by Adam Diggs of Marable. 40 to nothing, Marable over Greensboro. Nice drive by Marable that time. Extra point attempt by Marables. Ian Hubs. And that's another one that's good. So Marable leading 40 to nothing over Greensboro. 316 left to go third quarter. Thousands of fans and friends and competitors come to Marable each year to follow the Scots or come to college. Marable's hotels of choice make them make their stay even more memorable. Please help us thank the Hampton Inn out by the airport, the Hilton Inn out by the airport, La Quinta Inns and Suites out by the airport, the Courtyard Marriott and the Holiday Inn Express, all right there by the Knoxville Airport, McGee Tyson. We want to thank them all for their support. Great hotels, and again, just 10 minutes away from campus uh, on a slow ride. Great airport here in this area. McGee Tyson Airport. Also a, one of the bases for the uh, refueling unit. Air refuelers. This ball is going to sail into the goal line and then goes out of bounds. So that ball sails into the end zone. Nice kick. So Greensboro takes over. See who the quarterback is. It's going to be Chaston Robinson. Robinson, uh, four of seven passing. And he's going to hand off this time. And nice cutback by the tailback. Tackled by Ian Hupp. Excuse me. Cannon carried the ball. Tackle made by, I believe, uh, Mark Hill Kia. It's a five-yard gain. Trulon Jones, uh, 17 carries, 19 yards. Excuse me, nine carries, 17 yards. Second down and let's call it a long five. Robinson right over the center. And a tackle on a nice design play. Gets all the way into Maribel territory. Nice run by the tailback catching the ball over the center. And that's uh, Chadwick Massenburg from Raleigh, North Carolina. Got by the linebacker and turned it on. Big gain. That's the biggest gainer right now for Greensboro. That was the tailback, number 25, with that pass. Robinson, little, it's going to be a triple pass. Throw this ball deep downfield, and it is missed. 
by the receiver downfield, Jakari Boone. Should have been six. Into the game for Maribel goes Corey Trent, the freshman defensive lineman from Powder Springs, Georgia, six feet tall, 265. He's second and 10. Nice, two nice design plays by Greensboro. A handoff to Robinson Tolan with some running room now. Going to get about eight to the 21 yard line. Well, let's make it just shy of the 20. 155 left to go third quarter. Maryville up 41-0, Greensboro on the move. And Tolan Jones is going out. Looks like he's got a cramp. Replacing him will be Quivon Cannon, 5'6", 175, from Swansea, South Carolina. And he'll get the first down. Jamal Ware into the game for Maribel now. Maribel substituting pretty freely. Trent Cumby in the game, also from Cookville, Tennessee, in the game. Deepest penetration by Greensboro thus far from the 15-yard line. Robinson, the quarterback. Double reverse, and this is going to be that double reverse pass. Throw this ball outside, caught complete for the touchdown. The touchdown catch made by Ryan Wall. And that play they ran earlier. Sixteen yard touchdown, and Greensboro scores with 102 left to go in the third quarter. They lead 41. Excuse me, they're down 41-6. Going to go for two, I guess it looks like. And they will. And they try to get it to the tailback. Incomplete on the two point conversion to Bailey Cook. Illegal formation penalty declined. So the two point attempt is no good. Maribel leads 41-6. Maribel College Athletic Department would like to thank Ken Joe Markets, Firehouse Subs, Realty Trust Group, Greg Gein, by the way, former basketball player involved in that, and LeConte Wealth Management for their key support during the 2017 and 18 season. So Maryville with 102 left to go in the game will get the ball back. It is 41 to 6 Maryville. Last two drives weren't too bad by Greensboro. Maryville 4 of 10 on third down, Greensboro 2 of 11. Maryville 26 first downs, 5 passing, 20 rushing. One by penalty, Greensboro, three, nine first downs, three rushing, three passing, three by penalty. Maribel touched the ball 67 times, 445 yards. Greensboro, 47 times, 131 yards. Most of that coming here in the third quarter. I don't believe they had much in the first. And this ball is going to sail down to the five. And coming down to the outside line and across the 30-yard line for Maribel was, looked like Mike Clark. Nope, take that back. That was Decker. Kane Adamson going back into quarterback. Austin Himmel, excuse me. Maribel still sticking with that front five. Kane, the quarterback, puts a man in motion on a little speed sweep. And right up the middle, and now we get a late flag. 
So that's coming back, 20-yard gain. I'm sorry, I missed the call. What was the call? We think it was holding. Blocking below the knees were, we call it a chop block. It's a tough call either way. Referee makes, the officials make that call for safety reasons. A lot of times you'll be blocking a defender and fall down and it looks like you've chop block but uh, it's a good rule good speed sweep there by Merrill's Jackson 15 yards on the penalty that ball was across the 50 yard line on that run so that's a big Big gain, or big loss, excuse me. First and 25, Diggs. Back to pass, he'll scoot out of there. And that's not Diggs, that's uh, Kane. Kane's gonna get uh, back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a, a yard or two. Bailey on the tackle. Second down. Little handoff to the outside. And the Greensboro crowd getting psyched up. Not sure about what. Maybe it was a big hit over there. And that's the end of the quarter. The hit over there made by Jaron Hamrick. Little to cheer about for Greensboro, but that was one they could take pride in. Nice hit. So that's the end of the quarter. The Maryville College Athletic Department would like to thank Ken Joe Markets, Firehouse Subs, Realty Trust Group, and LeConte Wealth Management for their key support during this 2017 and 18 season. Maribel College Athletic Department would also like to thank some key sponsors for this season. The Blunt Partnership, Jasper Highlands, Premier Transportation, taking uh, our Scots around the country safely, and the Smoking Mountain Brewery. Thank you for your support, guys. Maribel leading 41-6. And it's going to be uh, third and long. Third and about 22. Oh, wide open. And it's going to be caught. First down and more. Nice pass by Kane. It was a floater, though, against the wind. Reception made by Simon Holcomb, the freshman wide receiver from Cumming, Georgia. Ball floated against the wind, and uh, nice play by the receiver to come back, catch the ball, make sure he had it, and get the first down. And right up the middle, for a run is tailback Keyshawn Decker, I believe. Decker, freshman running back from Hoboken, New Jersey. Isaac Boburn in there now for Maribel at a lineman's position. And it's Kane up the middle. And Kane gets to the 17-yard line. So first down. Adams, 
Harrible with that hurry up offense still. And to the outside and getting some yardage and now we get a flag coming in. Decker on the run. Peter Hollers going in for Marable. Sophomore wide receiver from Livingston, Tennessee. Hold by Marable's Simon Holcomb. Penalty yardage is uh, mounting up. Marable uh, now, I believe, over a, close to 100 yards, 9 for 96. Looks like it's first and 15. 13 40 left to go in the game. Marable up over Greensboro. Greensboro 41 6 here at Maryville. And coming in on the cornerback squeeze or blitz was Garrett Brannick. Kayshawn Decker, the freshman running back, lost a couple, a yard anyway, second and 16. David Martin, the uh, receivers coach for Marable, former UT receiver, has made a great, great effort by these guys. And it's going to be intercepted by number 17 of Greensboro, Kasim Bagley. Took it away from Holcomb. So the ball was intercepted in the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20 yard line first and 10. The uh, receiver was Simon Holcomb. Twelve forty-nine left to go in the game here at Maryville. Maryville up 41-6. Quarterback back in for Greensboro. Robinson. Robinson going to hand the ball off to tailback Tolan. Tolan going to get about five. And clock runs. You're down 41 nothing. Excuse me, 41 6. Got to get what you can get. Any positive yards are a good thing. Talking about Coach uh, Martin. He's standing there at the 40 yard line taking a sip. Really helped the uh, receiving core to the outside and getting uh, maybe a yard or two back to the line of scrimmage was Quavon Cannon. Missing the tackle though for a potential loss was Eddie Burton. Second down and let's call it five. Make it third and five. Robinson, the quarterback behind him, Tolan Jones, two wide outs to the right, one to the left. Robinson back to pass and knocked away a nice tackle. Nice break up there by Jeremy Hardnett. Now they say it was Eddie Burton. Back deep for Marable will be Pierre Chadwick. Chadwick from Nashville Overton, Overton High School. The punter, Jonathan Pfeiffer from Charlotte, North Carolina, Iraqi River High School. 
and we're going to get a delay of game. That'll set Greensboro back five. That'll make you pull your hair out if you're a coach. Sometimes it's not the player's fault. Sometimes key personnel don't get in there in, t in time. It's an unusual setup for uh, Greensboro, making Maribel defend, spreading the field. Here we go, second attempt. One of these went over the head into the end zone. There's a nice punt. Going to get down to the 35-yard line. Fumbled by Maribel, but picked right back up by Pierre Chadwick. Maribel taking over. New quarterback for Maribel, number 18, Chris Costillo. Chris Castillo, Castillo, let's get that right. And he's gonna keep the ball and go right up the middle and he's gonna get him some yards, about four. Castillo, 5'10", 185 from Richardson, Texas. Castillo uh, has played in two games. He's 9 of 14 in those two games. Going to hand off the middle, and it is going to be Christmas with the first down. Chase Christmas. Maryville up 41-6, 10-43 left to go. Aaron Solomon in the game for Maryville as a wide receiver. Castillo. And off to Christmas. And again, Christmas 10, 15, 20, still going down to the 25. And he's going to get inside the 25 all the way to the 22 yard line. Be about 28 yards on that game. Just estimating. I'm impressed with Christmas in his burst. He's got a good burst of speed. Maribel now threatening again, up 41-6. And that's not a good decision by Castillo. On the option play, good read by Greensboro's Robert Rouse, freshman defensive end from LaGrange, North Carolina. It's near Lenore, I believe. Looking out here at number four for Maribel, Terry Stewart. 6'1", 230. Handoff to Christmas to the outside. Christmas following his blocking. Quick burst, and he's going to get himself about 10 yards inside to 20. Nine, 10 left to go in this game. Maryville up 41-6. Quarterback Chris Castillo from Richardson, Texas. Castillo looking over the offense. Quick pass to the outside. And down the sideline after breaking a tackle, down to the 10, I believe. Referee going to mark it right there. Good catch by Simon Holcomb, freshman wide receiver, 5'10", 180. Ball at the 9. 
Decker, the tailback, is steal the quarterback. From the hash mark, first and goal. And it's Decker going in for the touchdown. Kashawn Decker with a nine-yard touchdown run. Hoboken, New Jersey. Coach Hayes getting the luxury of being able to put in a lot of young men, get some reps. Very impressed with the Maryville receiving core. Score now 47-6. Maryville up with 8.20 left to go. Extra point attempt is set and kicked, and it is now 48 to six Marable over Greensboro here at Marable College. The Scots uh, in control from the beginning. Don't forget today is Coach versus Cure MD Day. You can donate $10 today by texting CURE, that's C-U-R-E, to 50555. Text to CURE, 50555. Thank you for your support of the Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy. Maribel College Athletic Department would also like to thank key sponsors for this 2017-18 and 18 season. That's the Blunt Partnership, Jasper Highlands, Premier Transportation, and Smoky Mountain Brewery. So Maribel uh, in control, 48-6 with 8.20 left to go here at Maribel. Temperature now 75 degrees. Wind has died down somewhat here on the field. The kick is going to sail down to the 11 yard line. Dropped, picked up, and getting nowhere. And a nice tackle by Marable Jamal Ware, the 6'1, 210 linebacker from Fairfield. Alabama. Good speed by wear there. And that's uh, one thing that if you're a football coach you really want. You want some speed on your team at every position. And it looks like marable has got some very athletic kids with a lot of speed. I'm sure after last week uh, they are got their feet back on the ground. North Carolina Wesleyan took it to Maribel. Maribel's bounced back now with a convincing win. Pass hits the ground and scooped up nicely by the shortstop over there, Ryan Wall. Second and 10. Robinson going to go back to pass. Same play. Different result. Uh, still not much yardage. A lot of those plays are designed, the short plays, designed to draw the defense up and then kind of fake it and throw down field. But uh, the key to defensive football is follow your assignments and your keys. You have certain assignments based on the down and distance position on the field, and you have certain keys. Defense backs generally look in toward the center for a quick look to see what the center is going to do. And there's that pass downfield, caught complete, and getting knocked out of bounds by a host of Maryville players. First down on the reception by Ryan Wall. Wall coming into this game was averaging 20 yards per catch. He had nine catches for 177 yards. Wall's uh, 38 yards prior to that. And there's a, another little catch out there and being met. Well, 
one good thing happened there, no flag. Nice tackle by Kyle Riddle. Receiver didn't like that he got stood up, but um, got to keep your cool, guys. It's football. If you got the ball, expect to be tackled. 6.33 left to go in the game. Merrill up 48-6. There's that little fake and go. Throw the ball way too far downfield. And Wall over there wants a flag. Number 69 of Greensboro there, Brandon Grady, 63340 from Thousand Oaks, California. Didn't like what was going on there. Lucky he didn't get a flag thrown on him. Wide out to this side for Greensboro. Haven't called his name much. Greg Tyler, a junior wide receiver. Richardson with that pass to the tight end. That's a nice stab out of the air. Nicholas Coleman, the freshman tight end from High Point, North Carolina, gets a first down out to the 43-yard line. 48-6, your score here. Maryville leading with 6-15 left to go. Maryville in the dark jerseys, Greensboro in the light jerseys. Richardson kind of winds up and gives that ball a toss. He'll go back to pass, throw this ball out deep, and threw it a little high. I believe it was intended for Greg Tyler. Tyler had one reception for 25 yards coming into this game. Robinson now 10 of 19 for 96 yards. And almost picked off by the Maribel linebacker, Jaden Harris, freshman, 5'11", 220 from Greenback, North, excuse me, Greenback, Tennessee, just up the road from here. Visions of sugar plums. He wanted that one. Watched him play twice in high school and uh, say 1A high school out uh, south of Marable here. Good player, glad to have him. There's that fake give and go. And uh, incomplete wall being covered very, very well over there by the defender for Marable, Blake. I don't know that that's Blake Henderson. That was not, that was Hassan Thomas from Spring, Texas. Pfeiffer going back into punt, and Pierre Chadwick from Merrill will be back to receive that punt. He'll be standing on about the 25-yard line. With the wind at his back, Pfeiffer will punt. Greensboro down 48-6 to Merrill here at Merrill with 5.50 left to go in the game. And a nice punt. Going to be picked up at the 15 to the 20. Breaks a tackle. 30 to the outside. One man to beat down the sideline to the 50. Spins it and steps out of bounds. Chadwick with a huge run into Greensboro territory. The 5'11", 180 pound defensive back punt returner from Nashville, Overton in Nashville, Tennessee. Looks like we got another quarterback coming in for Maryville and that's uh, Trey Pope from Bluntville, Tennessee. That's Northeast Tennessee. Pope is 6'2", uh, 190. He'll hand the ball off in the backfield. Or did he keep it? He kept it, I believe. Gets back to the line of scrimmage.
Anthony Mahoney in the game for Maribel. He's a junior from Cypress Creek, Texas, playing at the tackle position, 6'4", 300. Hand off to the outside. That's to Kenneth Horn. Well, that's not. That's uh, number 22. I didn't think it was the punter, Jay Martin from Bartlett, Tennessee. Eric Von Holden was in the game from Columbia. Pope back to pass, going to throw the ball. Caught. No. Just missed by Kaylin Carter, the freshman wide receiver from Cedar Hill, Texas. If you want to play, this is where you uh, show the coaches you can play. 420 line left to go. Maryville will punt. 48-6 is your score. Punter going in for Maryville is Kenneth Horn still. Back deep for Greensboro is Garrett Hall, the junior wide receiver. He's from Asheboro, North Carolina. He's going to stand down around the goal line. Whistle. Marable getting ready to punt. And this goes off the side of his foot and then takes a bounce back across the 20. So Keith Horn with a uh, Unusual punt for him. Remember with 31 first downs, Greensboro with 11. Webster going back in at quarterback. Make that Robinson Webster started, but Robinson's gone most of the way. Going to hand off on a little sprint draw to the outside. Tackle made by Marable's Dallas Wolf, the sophomore defensive lineman from St. Petersburg. was Harris on the tackle. You'll have to uh, bear with me on some of these numbers. They're kind of bunched up and hard to see. Short run by Greensboro. Third down and let's call it seven. 3.30 left to go in the game. Maribel, 48 to six. Back to pass. And just throws it out there. And good pressure by Maribel's Dallas Wolf. Knocked the quarterback down. Incompleted pass. Fourth down. 308 left to go in the game. Maribel up 48 6. Here comes the punt by Pfeiffer, and another good punt. And letting it go, not a good decision, young man. Well, actually, it turned out to be a good decision. That was Clayton Ogle, wide receiver from Seymour, Tennessee. First and 10 for Maribel. Two o'clock game for Maryville in two weeks. The Methodist, it's homecoming. Maryville off, has a bye week as they say. 
uh, homecoming, always a great time here at Maribel. Lots of alumni come back, and uh, I've been around a few years. It's good to see some of these young kids come back, and uh, now they're grown and have their own families, so nice to see. Running back for Maribel that time, getting some help was... Uh, Number 22, Jay Martin, the junior running back from Bartlett. Also going into the game for Maryville was Zach Lehman, offensive lineman, sophomore. And that's a new quarterback for Maryville. And Terry Stewart from Pleasant Grove, Alabama, 6'1", 230. He's a sophomore. They haven't listed him as a running back. And now he's uh, playing the wildcat position. Big kid. And he'll just get a couple of yards. Maybe gets the first down. 150 left to go in the game. 48-6. Does get the first down. Out comes Terry Stewart, and back in goes Trey Pope. At the 33-yard line with 140 left to go, Marable looks to the sideline for some plays. We've seen uh, five quarterbacks today for Marable, if you count the last one. And to the outside with a good run, and down the sideline goes the big boy. That's Jay Martin. 5'10", 210, and Martin gets a good uh, workout. Quentin Powell in there for Marable. Eric Von Holland in there also for Marable at tight end on this side. Pope, the quarterback, looks to the sidelines. Jay Martin back there, running back. And Pope going to keep the ball himself following his blockers, and he's going to get across the 50 to the 45, maybe to the 44. Tackle made by Greensboro Cornelius Bailey, a freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia. Greensboro traveled today from Greensboro, they went to get a hotel and uh, didn't realize that the University of Tennessee was playing and all the hotels were booked. So they uh, had a long drive to get here today. And getting close to the first down anyway will be Jay Martin. 25 seconds left. That was the more than likely the last play of the game. Maribel wins today 48-6 to over Greensboro. And again, Maribel with a bye next week. It will be homecoming after that. And the homecoming games start at 2 p.m. Great time for homecoming. Maribel wins today 48-6. The Scots back on the winning track. Certainly uh, a good game for Maribel. Getting a little instruction here by SID Eric Hedgeson. Always good to have him as backup. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Eric. Eric, been here a while, does a great job. Maribel winning 48-6 uh, to 6 over Greensboro today. Uh, statistically, Maribel dominated just about in every aspect 34 first downs to 11 for Greensboro. Maribel had seven first downs passing, 26 rushing, one by penalty. Greensboro, 11 first downs, five passing, three rushing, three by penalty. Maribel, much better third down efficiency today, seven of 14. Greensboro, just four of 16. Maribel 
ran 91 plays for 617 yards today. And uh, throw in 96 yards of penalties. And Maribel had a very good day today. Holding Greensboro to just 171 yards of offense. The average play for Maribel, 6.8 yards. Greensboro, 2.8 yards. Maribel net yards passing 180. They were 17 of 28 with one interception. Greensboro net yard passing 132. They were 14 of 34 with no interceptions. Maribel, one sack. Greensboro, one sack. Maribel net yards per pass, 6.4 yards. Greensboro, 3.9. Maribel with uh, 437 yards rushing on 63 attempts, 6.9 yards per rush. Greensboro, 39 net yards rushing on 28 attempts. That's 1.4 yards. Maribel had four punts for 103. Greensboro punted 10 times today. The average punt, Maribel's 136 yards. Greensboro, 41 yards. Maribel, again, nine penalties for 96 yards, which uh, certainly didn't help that 617 yards. Had they not have those penalties, they would have been over 700 yards in total offense. Adam Diggs for Maribel, 11 of 19 for 100 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Kane Adamson, 5 of 7, 71 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. Chris Castillo got in. He was 1 for 1 for 9 yards. Trey Pope got in to uh, throw, and he was 0 for 1. Running uh, Elijah Chenier, 10 point yards a carry, 15 for 151 yards. Elijah Harrison, 14 for 95 yards, 6.8 yards per carry. Certainly a, a good day. Uh, Chase Christmas got in there, 10 of 89, 9 yards per carry, 31 yards was his longest. Kane Adamson, uh, 6 for 25 for 42 yards. Jay Martin carried there at the end, 3 for 22. Kashawn Decker got in, 4 of 18. Diggs, 3 for 13. Uh, Sean Holcomb, 1 of 10. Make that Simon Holcomb. Stewart, uh, 2 of 7. Brandon Cloyd got in for 1 carry for 6 yards. Trey Pope, 1 for no yards. Chris Castillo, 2 for 3. Elijah Rachel, 1 of 4. Reception, Siegel, three for 58 yards, one touchdown. Simon Holcomb, two for 55, no touchdowns. Jordan Ligon, one for 35. Devon Lewis, five catches today, 25 yards. Good for him. Uh, Brady Hess from Alcoa, the tight end, one of two for two yards. One uh, fumble recovery by Marable, that was a TD. And uh, Maribel leads today going away 48-6. to six. They'll be back in two weeks here at home for homecoming. We're going to sign off. This is George DeBobby saying so long, everybody. Thanking our sponsors, the Hampton Inn, La, uh, La Quinta Inns and Suite, the Courtyard Marriott, the Holiday Inn Express, Firehouse Subs, Ken Joe Markets, Realty Trust Group, LeConte Wealth Management, the Blunt Partnership, Jasper Highlands, Premier Transportation, and Smoky Mountain Brewery. This is George DeBobby saying, Maribel wins today 48-6. So long, everybody.